Hi there, my name is Mark Price. I am a Tai Chi meditation and Qigong teacher. Um, I usually list Tai Chi and meditation first because most people are familiar with those terms. Qigong tends to be less familiar, however it's probably the most important of those three. In actual fact, Qigong covers those three. You know, Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan, as we would say, is a kind of Qigong. You know, it would fall into the Qigong category. Although uh, a strictly Tai Chi Chuan teacher would probably say it's not Qigong and differentiate them, but it is a type of Qigong. Meditation is something that you do as part of Qigong. So kind of like Qigong is a sort of an umbrella thing that covers the whole lot. I wanted to get that out to you because I know that some of you may not actually be familiar with the term Qigong. Still doesn't really tell you what it is. Um, and probably it doesn't matter for you to know what it is um, because I'm going to explain to you the things that we're going to be doing. And today the things that we're going to be doing is a very special uh, aspect of the Qigong that I've learned. And the knowledge that I've learned and that I teach comes from this guy that you can see in the image behind me, a guy called Dr. Shen Hongzhong. Um, and um, basically he uh, researched um, ancient and modern exercises, meditations and, and, and the like um, from, the, from the viewpoint of Western medicine and traditional Chinese medicine and systematized them in a way uh, and developed an understanding of, of how they help you with your health how they support your health, amongst other things. Um, so that's important for us. So, um, uh, so anyway, this particular thing that we're going to be doing today is called the sound Dao Yin. Dao Yin basically means exercise. Um, and so we're going to be doing some <laughs> very special sounds, um, not widely practiced uh, in the West, mainly because people are a bit embarrassed to make noises, uh, particularly with neighbours close by or whatever. <clears throat> but uh, you've got to overcome that. You've got to overcome this uh, shyness, if you like, to make sounds. Um, and it's important to do that because actually um, the sound part is kind of like part of the whole. It's part of what makes it so special, what makes it work so well. And I could spend 25 minutes talking to you about what makes it work so well. And um, although you'd be much wiser about that, we still wouldn't have actually done any practice. And really, this is about doing some practice, doing some exercise that's hopefully going to help you. From the Western perspective, this sound exercise helps you or is believed to help with Parkinson's uh, because of certain neural pathways uh, that associate movement with sound. So... Um, it also has a Western scientific perspective to it and a good reason for us to do it. But even if you didn't have Parkinson's, it's really good for you to do this, this um, exercise. Or at least I'm going to tell you that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to break it down to you in parts. Um, and basically there's four parts to it. Posture is part number one how you stand or sit. At the moment I'm sat, hopefully you can tell that, but it's not obvious. Um, but you can be doing this standing up. And usually it's better to be doing this standing up if you can. Um, but the space that I'm working in today and the chances are the space that you're working in may actually restrict you from doing that. So I thought it'd be best to actually choose this space and do it sitting down. We can do it sitting down very effectively. But we've got to make sure we're in a good posture and I'm going to show you how to do that. The second thing is movement. Yeah, so there's uh, a movement that we do in synchronicity with sound. That movement that we do in this exercise is what we call internal. So you're not going to see externally a lot of movement going on. But when you're actually practicing the exercise, you'll appreciate and understand that there is actually quite a bit of movement going on. Often people get a little bit concerned with this because, because they can't see their own movement. They're trying to do the movement but they can't, and they can feel the movement, but they can't see it. So they think that they're not actually moving. Um, take my word for it, please, that um, if you're in that category when we're doing this, 
you are moving. The fact that you're trying to make the movements, the fact that you're in a good posture, <clears throat> excuse me, that will mean that you're making the right movements in the right way and it will be working for you. If you feel it's not working very well, if you feel not, you're not moving much, don't worry. The fact that you're trying is the thing that matters and the more that you try, the more that you will move um, and the more you'll improve and it will work out really nicely for you, I promise. So that's the thing number two. Thing number three is breath. You've got to breathe uh, in order to survive, yes? You also need to breathe in order to produce sound. We will be breathing in a particular way, in a special way. And the way in which we do this breathing basically uh, facilitates or amplifies or works with in synchronicity with your internal movement. You have to make the internal movements to make the sound. You have to make the internal movements to make the kind of breath that we want to make. And these things will work together. And obviously then, the fourth thing is the actual sound itself. So we have posture, we have movement, we have breath and we have sound and they all work together to produce the sound. That said, we're not so interested in the quality of the sound, we're not trying to sing, we're not trying to produce a beautiful performance, we are trying to achieve a certain effect within the body by doing this. That effect is essentially making particular sounds move through particular parts of the body. That's, that's it in a nutshell. And the way in which we do that is by having a, this particular posture that I'm going to call a good posture. Um, good is a bit of a catch-all word, not quite as bad as nice, um, but I'm going to explain to you what I mean by good in a bit. So you have a good posture, you're making the right movements, you're doing the right kind of breathing and it's producing sound that is moving through your body. Okay, that's about as much theory as we're going to cover. You need to have those concepts, though, to understand what we're going to be covering. So let's start with posture, shall we? Um, so I'm going to break this down into two parts. The upper part and the lower part, which you can't see yet. But I've got another camera down here that's pointing lower down that will allow you to see the lower part uh, which is equally important and in fact without it we won't be able to do the upper part. But I'm going to start with the upper part because that's what we're looking at for now. So what we want to do is to make our spine as long as possible. We're not trying to necessarily change the shape of it much, although we will be doing specific things that do change the shape of it if it's not shaped um, normally. Uh, but actually more importantly is just to expand it. So a lot of this stuff is about expansion and when we talk about expansion we're talking about opening the spaces between joints and the most important set of joints that we work with are the joints that make up the spine. So we want to try to stretch, we want to try to stretch the spine and the approach that we take to do this is to try to lift the head upwards. Um, so that's exactly what I'm doing now. Now in order to do that, you need to have a good grounding, you need to have your feet in the right position. That's why I was saying before that the lower half supports the upper half and you need to get that right. But basically, you're lifting the head up. Now, I'm gonna move sideways, or turn sideways, should I say. Luckily I've got this nice office chair which is on wheels and swivels so it allows me to move around so that I can show you stuff. In fact I'm going to turn this way because um, that way I'm going to be facing my mic so you better hear me better. Uh, here we go. So if I just pull the shirt tight a little bit on my back, hopefully you can see that I'm really trying to trying to make it straight but I, it's not important that it's straight, it's just that I'm trying. What I am trying to do though, something that uh, everybody pretty much in the West has a problem with, me, myself included, is this sort of forward head posture that we get. We're trying to get rid of that. So in order to get rid of that, we're gonna bring the head back so that it sits on top of the shoulders and then lift it upwards. So you're kind of bringing this part of the, 
of the jaw, this sort of angular part of the jaw backwards and lifting up through the back of the head. So there's two kind of lumps here behind your ears and they kind of tend to become, you become more aware of them as you're doing this effect. So if you can feel a kind of a pulling behind the ears, you're doing kind of the right thing. Now, notice how when I do that, this part of the chest lifts up. So as I bring the head back, the chest lifts up. We want to get rid of that bit. We want to keep, we want to keep the head back, but we want the chest to sink down. Now, our natural movement in making that happen is to let the head go forwards. Yeah, because we have a chronic stiffness in this area of the body, in the, in the shoulder girdle, as it's called. This is naturally, in the West, chronically stiff. Yeah. And um, when I say that, I just mean it's been like it for a long time, and therefore it's going to be, it's going to take a bit of effort to get rid of it. And that effort is not force. It's not pushing. It's not trying hard. It's just making the right changes in the right way. And it's chipping away at a stone rather than making it all work straight off. So you have to accept a little bit of um, a little bit of error, shall we say, to begin with. In that, you know, as you bring the head back, the chest comes up, particularly actually just below the collarbones. So if I just show you my collarbones here, just below here, that area tends to be quite stiff. So as you bring the head back, it will lift up. So then you want to try to move the collarbones down. By moving the collarbones, try to move them down. So just kind of rolling the shoulders a little bit and moving those down. It tends to pull the head forwards less. So it's a little trick there. And we just, we, all of this is gristle and muscle and we're trying to just soften it off. Yeah, so it can move. We know it can move, believe me, it can move. It's just gonna take a bit of time perhaps. So you move this forwards and then you bring the head back again and up. And then you move this forwards and you bring the head back. And there's this sort of constant interplay between stretching and lifting the head up, bringing it back on top of the shoulders and softening this area of the chest and moving it down and forwards. So this is about sound, but so far we're not talking about sound. We're just gonna get this posture right in order for us to make the noises that we're gonna make properly. Yeah. We want the sound to travel through the torso and therefore we need to have the shape of the torso sorted out but also the tension uh, in the torso sorted out. We want to choose where we want our tension to be, yeah? Um, and so this area here we don't seem to have or we believe that we don't have a choice with but we do actually and we have to work with that so that we can make it soft and we can make it tense as and when we need to. So that's the upper part of the body pretty much in a nutshell. There is one other little thing I want to talk about which I don't think you can see necessarily on the camera so I'm going to stand up just momentarily. This part of the back here, this part of the spine here, the lower part sort of lumbic area, this is another area that tends to get quite stiff. We tend to find uh, with problems in the spine that it comes in pairs. You know, if you've got stiffness around here, you're gonna have stiffness at the bottom because there's compensation happening with your posture to ensure that you stay upright when you're walking or um, to ensure that, uh, that you feel comfortable when you're sitting down. Now, if like me, you have an office job, you probably spend quite a lot of your time sat down, leaning forwards, looking at a screen, <laughs> yeah? but your weight is still pile driving down on the lower part of your spine. Now the spine is there to provide structure. And uh, Dr. Shen's theory was that actually it's, it's not so much there to bear load. It's there to provide structure. The muscles are there to bear load and the muscles, there are muscles around the spine, but they're quite small. They're quite, um, well, they're not as strong as your abs, yeah? Even if um, you're not ripped, like I'm not ripped, uh, your abs are gonna be much stronger than these small muscles that sit around the spine. 
So we want to bring the load of the body into the abs. In order to do that, we've got to be forwards in our sitting position. So that not forwards with the head, but forwards from the hips, which is what really why I stood up here. I want you to see that I'm a bit like a scissor lift. I'm, I'm sort of forwards here in my torso from my ribs, but my back is straight and I'm trying to bring my head back. So you need to be, not quite, but nearly perching on the edge of the chair so that you can have this forward posture. Okay, now I'm gonna move us over to the other camera so you can see how this is manifesting below. So I'm just going to uh, waggle my mouse around, press the correct button, hopefully, so that we switch over. Okay, and here we can have, it's a little bit close up I'm afraid, but never mind. So you can see my feet now and the lower half of my legs. Let me just try and adjust myself so that I'm positioned right. Okay, so bearing in mind that I'm moving around, but basically when you're sat down doing this work, you want to try to make it so that your feet are parallel. Now, we have perspective here, so it looks like my feet are turning out, but they're not actually, they're parallel. If anything, if you're going to err on the side of caution, err on the side of toes pointing in. Not that extreme though. Yeah. So you want to have the knees, here's my fingertips, you want to have the knees about the same distance apart as your hips are, your hip joints, which I'm pointing at, but you can't see unfortunately. Um, perhaps if I do this in the chair. I'll lower the chair down for a moment, uh, which I'm not going to keep for reasons which will hopefully become obvious, but you can see that my well, maybe you can't see, <laughs> but my thighs are um, the same distance apart, and hence my feet are the same distance apart as my um, as my hips. Right, I'm going to lift the chair back up again because the other component of this that you need to be aware of is um, is is that the the angle of your thighs. I have to drop it down again. Should be. Uh, obtuse, so it should be greater than 90 degrees, this angle of, of, the, of the knees. The feet should be back so that the tips of the toes are vertically above, let me just come back over here, the tips of the toes are more or less vertically in line with the ends of the knees. We do that because we want the feet to bear some of the weight, so it's almost as if the chair isn't there, so I've just lifted myself off the chair. Yeah, it's almost as if the chair isn't there and I'm kind of standing up, squatting, as if I was using a French loo. Yeah, but not quite, because I have got some of my weight on my sit bone. In fact, in an ideal world, you want it to be 30, 30, 30, 30, you know, a third in each bit. Or the third, two thirds across your feet and one third in your bum. Why do we do that? We do that because we want gentle, gentle, we're talking like ounces, if not grams force going down through the feet into the ground so that you can create this lift up in the spine. Okay, lots of details I'm afraid, but it's well worth getting these things right. Obviously you're not going to get it perfect because you don't have me there with you giving you real-time feedback. So it can be quite useful to have a mirror so that you can see what's going on. Obviously you can also look down and see your legs and how they're working. Okay, so Basically, that's how you're going to be sat if you're sitting down. Let's go back to the upper body because I'm sure uh, I'm not terribly beautiful, but I'm probably more beautiful in the face than in the legs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm sat forwards. Ah, we have this here and we have this here that needs to be thought about. The arms are basically just relaxed. Yeah, just like a pair of curtains just hanging around. <clears throat> When we set up, let's just have it like that. So we're lifting up through the spine, bringing the head back on top of the shoulders. And we're also trying to move the shoulders sideways that way. So the shoulders are soft. We don't want them lifted up like this. We don't want them forced down like that. We just want them neutral in a vertical direction, but horizontally, we wanna just try and gently move them apart. So you've gotta get the shoulder blades involved in that and also again the collarbones. Collarbones then is moving are moving out at that end and moving down at this end if you remember we were talking about softening down. 
I hope, by the way, that you are now sat in a similar position as this and following along, because that's exactly what I want you to do. Now, the hands, you may decide that to sat here like this with the arms dangling becomes uncomfortable. You may not. It's fine, but there are alternatives if you find it uncomfortable. So try it like this. If it becomes uncomfortable, then just take your hands and rest the backs of the hands halfway along your thighs. Sort of between the, the ends of the knees and the hip joints. Just the backs of the hands are resting on the thighs, the top of the thighs, halfway along. Okay, now we've got our posture right. The next thing we want to do is get our internal movement right. And thankfully, I'm going to show you that or talk to you about that together with the breathing. So the breathing and the movement happen together. Let's work them out together at the same time. What we're going to do is, I expect some of you, if not all of you, have heard of abdominal breathing. And what abdominal breathing means is that when you're breathing in and out, your belly's moving rather than, or it's more pronounced in the belly than it is in the chest area. Even though we think of our lungs being in the chest area, the diaphragm sits underneath them and it's that that moves up and down pretty much as you're breathing in and out. So you breathe in and you breathe out. It's kind of like drawing air in and then squeezing it back out again. So if you think about the belly um, and allow the, the ribs to stay still when you breathe in, then the belly has to move out to allow the diaphragm to move down into it and then it moves back in again as, as you breathe out. That is what, uh, translated into English, the, the Chinese refer to as positive abdominal breathing. If we were going to be breathing in the chest, we'd be using the muscles that sit between the, the, uh, the ribs as well, so the chest would be coming in and out. But we would just want to keep those relaxed. Um, I'm pausing there because actually we're not going to do that. But for now, just think about keeping those relaxed and breathing in and letting the belly come out. So just give it a go as I'm talking through. Just think as you're thinking about that, just breathing in and letting the belly come out and then breathing out and letting the belly go in again as you're breathing out. And hopefully you can feel, hopefully, the, the diaphragm moving down and up, sort of contracting and expanding as it draws in air and breathes it back out again. Now, we're not actually going to be doing it quite like that. We're going to change. We're going to switch things around because we want to uh, change air pressure in parts of the body in order to make the sounds that we want to make. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the abdominal muscles, although you may not realize that, you, you're just going to make a thing happen. Um, you're using the abdominal muscles to contract the abdominal cavity as you're breathing in. And therefore, you have to use the what are known as the intercostals, the muscles that sit between the ribs in order to, in order to breathe in. What you're going to do is you're going to pull the belly back um, and I'm saying that, I'm pointing at my belly, but the camera isn't looking at it. And probably ought, I ought to get that in view as much as possible as if I can. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, so as I, so the normal abdominal breathing, as I breathe in, my belly comes out. And then as I breathe out, the belly goes in again. It tends to be more pronounced on people who don't, who have bigger bellies. But don't worry about it, no one's watching. So to change that, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the belly back as you breathe in and notice how my chest has to lift out as I breathe in. And then don't force the belly out, you just relax it as you breathe out. But you have to lift up the pelvic floor, not just when you're breathing out, but particularly when you're breathing out, but all the time. So when you're breathing in, lift the pelvic floor up Pull the navel back towards the belly to breathe in. Keep the pelvic floor lifted up and relax the chest and the, the front of the body as you breathe out. So you're kind of breathing out and meeting the, uh, the pelvic floor lifted up. That's about as complicated as I'm, as I'm going to make it for you because, again, you're going to need feedback. But I think that's enough. So when you're breathing in, pulling the belly back, trying to make the navel touch the spine, the front of the spine, 
and just letting the chest relax and open so that the air can come into the lungs. And then as you breathe out, keep the pelvic floor lifted up and just relax it all back down again. So you're kind of like relaxing down and breathing down. But as it goes down, you want to try and keep the head back and the spine stretched. So we'll have a go at that for about five reps. Try and make it as slow as possible. So although I'm doing it, you can do it in your own time. You don't have to do it with me if you can't breathe this slowly. Okay, hopefully you've got the hang of that. Now we're going to get some sound involved. So there's a whole bunch of sounds. In fact, the sound down is called the five sounds, but it also has a further six sounds on top of that. And then there's a two, two further sounds that we use to warm up. And actually those two sounds that we warm up with are probably the most important. We're gonna cover one of those sounds today, which is ah, not ah, but ah, so notice how the, the mouth is kind of more open at the sides. R is more like that, if I exaggerate it, and then ah is like that. So we're kind of smiling in the face a little bit, keeping the head back. And as you do that, you can kind of feel the back of the neck stretching more as you do this. Okay, and so the, the, you have to make your sound on an out breath. You may have noticed that already when I'm talking to you that I'm talking about breathing in. Oh, I can't really talk to you when I'm breathing in. And then when I'm breathing out, I can talk to you. So we use the out-breath to make the sound. But we breathe in using this reverse abdominal breathing, pulling the belly back, really trying to, um, uh, to activate and work the abdominal muscles, keeping the spine stretched. And then when you breathe out, you want to make this R sound. So I'm going to make the R sound. You can join in with me if you want to. Um, Eventually, you will have to join in with me in order for this to work for you. But for now, I just want to demonstrate to you kind of how it sounds. So I'm going to breathe in. Uh... So the out breath is doing all this work that we were doing before, and it's being used to make the sound. And as I make the sound, I can feel the vibrations of that sound moving down the body. So it's coming from around about here and then it's traveling down here. I don't mean that the sound is traveling like that all the time. I just mean that the, you sort of, the focus of vibration is changing from a sort of bunched up area here and turning into an elongated string almost, or a pair of strings that are going down the front of the body. Okay, so let's do that one more time as a demonstration. Uh... Okay, um, so you're the, your awareness is moving down with it. My awareness is moving down from up here, down deep into the belly. Now you may notice I got a bit of a bump there when I did that, that's because I have what we call an active dantian, I have an active belly. If you get a bit of movement in the belly, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you keep your pelvic floor lifted up. If you don't get any movement in the belly, that's also perfectly fine. We're just making these sounds. These sounds are doing an internal massage through your body, around the spine. Now it's your turn to join in if you haven't already. Remember also this final point. As you're breathing out, as the front of the body is moving downwards. You want to keep the head back and you want to physically exert a little bit in stretching the spine so that you're lifting the top of the head upwards. Yeah? Are you ready? Three, two, one, in breath. Uh... as long 
calm as possible, that out breath. In breath again. Uh... sound as you stretch the spine you're kind of fighting against this movement downwards the movement downwards is happening but you're fighting with the spine to prevent it from going forwards as soon as the spine goes forwards it deadens the sound we want to make this sound as loud and as strong as possible we're not straining we're singing with the muscles in the body you ready again uh... few more times and then I'll have a little, little chat and we'll close off. Keep going folks, breathing in. Uh... as me. You can be the naughty girl or the naughty boy in the class and try and make weird overtones by sounding it in a different note. Give it a try, see how, see how it works for you. Go for your natural note, yeah. And kind of relax with it as you open. Ah. floor lifted up. <sighs> Closing your eyes and moving your mind inside, move your awareness inside to feel the sound travelling down. Two more goes, yeah? feeling in the body. It's almost like your molecules are all excited from the noise and it's nice just to sit with that for a few moments and just notice what you notice really. Now I tend to be a bit verbose I guess but uh, you know you you probably should carry on doing this maybe for 10 minutes maybe for 20 minutes um, and of course we haven't been doing it for that long because I've been talking you through how you sit, how you breathe, how you move, um, which is very important. And once you've got those bits right, and once you've worked out how to produce the sound, then you're on your own. Then you can really go for it. Um, so uh, try it, practice it, 
for another 10 minutes maybe now and then practice it again tomorrow for another 10 minutes and then the day after and keep doing that. Try it for a week or a fortnight, 10 minutes a day and see how, you get, how it sits with you. It is an unusual exercise. There's not an awful lot of external movement, but there's a lot of internal movement and you do feel like you've been working hard after you've been doing this. But also you have this, this lovely, almost calm, meditative feeling when you've finished, or even in the middle of it, actually. Um, so I'm going to close off there now. Um, I wish you luck. I, I, if, if you have questions, then um, then aim the questions at your contacts at Parkinson's Care UK and I'm sure they'd be happy to forward them on to me and I'll provide you with some answers uh, and do look out for the second video where we'll be doing some more external movements but also more of these internal movements along with it. Thank you very much for watching and listening and joining in and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.